hello again. Um, so this is uh, my last video of this little chunk. Uh, it's kind of my spurt of improving, or what's it called? Sprint? Yeah, sure, it's called Sprint, of uh, improving my KOS script. So uh, it, it works on all of my test vehicles. Uh, I've used the Atlas Mercury, uh, the Titan 3A, the Titan 3C. So the 3A has a big trans stage as its upper stage, and the 3C has two 12, uh, 1205 solid boosters on the sides. Um, I've also improved, I've rewritten uh, a custom version. Um, I made myself a script for when to release the clamps. Um, it's aware of multiple engines. That was something I hadn't initially considered. But let's say it um, it releases when it's 1G of acceleration. So let's see, let's switch to zero. Run launch 4.chaos. And this time I'll be posting this script because it's you know, improved enough uh, in function that I'm willing to share it. Um, I'll, I want to clean up the code because it's hideous, uh, really ugly, and uh, next, uh, so that's, uh, I'll do that before the release after this, and um, look forward to, I'm going to be making functions that basically take in more than one variable. Right now it's just, um, technically I guess it's two variables because it depends on a velocity um, range, uh, although it's just that's kind of a yes or a no in that range, not dependent on the specific velocity. Um, but just time to apo is really the only func uh, thing that goes in beyond kind of them being set to those ranges. So after I typed it, that in, hit enter, uh, that's literally like the last time I have to touch anything other than for staging, which, like I said, for, for most vehicles, except perhaps this one, uh, currently I could just automate the staging quite quite readily because all, all it is is just hitting space, right? Just a, just a hot stage. And I kind of had a test version of that working at some point in the past. Um, um, as uh, Nathan Kell and I think where no, was it where logo uh, face and <laughs> number of people uh, suggested um, uniformly uh, that it would make sense for the launch clamp release to only release once your engines reach max th max thrust, which I think is fair. Um, that's that's superior for a couple of reasons, but I could think of an ed edge case where this one would give you trouble. Um, like, because right now it kind of tries to count the engines, and like for this one, I was actually a little surprised it worked because this one has three engines that are not the same. So basically what it would have done would have been catch one of these, me measure the thrust, and then just count for other active engines that are going to run. And so those three engines, so maybe it caught one of these and then multiply the thrust by three into the calculation. Uh, you know, something like that. But it did release at an all right time. Um, but yeah, the pretty much all my functions are continuous now. Like if you've been watching the pitch, like it's completely automatically controlled. There's a little discontinuity between each of the ranges. Like as you see, it goes through the uh, as it goes through the various phases. Like right there, it just did a little bit of a correction pitch down between modes. Uh, in my next version, or maybe a couple down the line, like once I've got improved functions, as I want to take into account other variables, uh, it'll be a much smoother function with maybe. Uh, maybe no transitions past like once once the uh, dynamic pressure fade out occurs hmm. That's the latest I've ever staged that base off But I did just test the script to confirm it worked fine for this. So let's see how it performs So that was about 30 kilometers My AP was about 30 kilometers higher than I've ever let this script run it for but that should be fine um, And you'll see some of the weaknesses it has for example So right off the bat if I was manually controlling this I see this number slowly decreasing uh, but not as fast as it do. I want it to be considering that this is ticking down once a second, right? So I'd want, because those numbers are now matching like that, um, like I can make a mental note. I can tell this is going to this is going to be our terminal stage. So that's a measure I'll be having the code do. It'll tell this is the terminal stage, and then it'll do comparison of those numbers to match them, uh, as well as to optimize for our altitude, kind of bef before this stage as well as that. Um, yeah. Da -da -da. The only vehicle it can't quite get into orbit, this current script of my test vehicles, is the Titan 2 GLV, uh, Titan 2 GLV um, so with Gemini. Um, it can pretty close uh, get into orbit, but that's um, there's two reasons why it can't do that one. Now, one, that's that vehicle requires a pretty specific flight path, and it's you know currently this function isn't smart, smart enough to realize that. Um, I believe I can make it that way once it's aware of the burn time of the stages, because if it can tell either that these stages have high thrust weight ratio. Um, or that you know, this is the total burn time is quite short compared to you know, uh, a lookup function I'll have, you know, where like five minutes is very fast vehicle, say 15 minutes of stages to get to orbit is long, as an example. So it can get pretty close to orbit with the Titan II and the Gemini. I'm, I'm impressed by it. Um, but that'll ultimately be a vehicle I keep using as a test, as you know, to tell 
make sure that when I make improvements, either the func the functioning of that vehicle is as good or better than last than my last run with it. Uh, da -da -da. What else? So it's nearly reached orbit. So you can see see that number. I also so you can see a measure here, pitch mod. So I set it to no longer go below zero uh, before it reaches us the next mode, I believe three, which which helps for most vehicles. It's a little bit it's a little bit troublesome for this one and the Titan to uh, Gemini as well, where either you'd want it to pitch down you know, uh, more aggressively during the early part or be able to pitch just a little bit below. Um, prograde in this range. See here now that it switched modes, it had to pitch down pretty aggressively, which means we're getting a lot of losses for thrusting off of straightforward. Um, but ultimately, I find that, that still works okay for this vehicle. You can see it's continuously uh, smoothly pitching back up as it can tell that it's reducing that time. But right now, it just has no consciousness of this. And it might buck around a little bit when it jumps between the next modes here. Those last modes aren't too clean uh, yet. Um, I might have just kind of used very similar functions. See, there we go. It flipped itself around to kind of try to match in, uh, a pitch it couldn't right before. Um, it didn't even burn out. See, it, it, it finished with 300 uh, meters per second left in the tanks. Um, so it's a it's a pretty uh, damn good program, I find. Um, and it works pretty well. I just need to add some other functions. I really just need to learn a little more of KOS because I needed to learn kind of a bit more about the objects it has and how it handles them, uh, just to get that launch clamp thing to work. Because I actually need a measure of, for the current engines, what the actual current thrust is, which it was a little tricky to get it to read out unless you read right from an engine object. Uh, but you'll, you'll see that in the, in the code if you look at it. Uh, but yeah, so the script has definitely come along. Uh, it's kind of being kludged more and more, so the code just looks, to, to me, the code is just really gross and ugly, and I'm not, you know, a professional, like, code engineer, so I don't architect it really nice from the ground up. But now that I've got the function in there, I can kind of restructure it and clean it up nicely. But I'm willing to, you know, share how it functions and looks now, because if you want to improve on it, by all means. Or just use it. Uh, like I said, it works for a ton of vehicles I have right now. Only, like, only a couple of edge cases where it performs, um, like, just can't quite get to orbit like the Titan 2 and the Gemini or um, let's say the Titan um, 3A where it's uh, when the last stage kind of hits Apo it has to pitch to about the engine uh, the, the trans stage has to pitch to about 45 degrees uh, above the horizon to kind of stay level uh, and if it was a little more aware of that it was that it that was the terminal stage and that it was kind of going to be lobbed it could have you know manually I would make adjustments for that so it didn't have to pitch so far above horizon but really if I were trying to do it I'd still have to I would lob it a little bit so I had more time to apo and then I would ultimately still probably end up pitching like 30 degrees or more up but still it's you know it functions all right it's not perfectly efficient but that's absolutely not my goal at the moment making it perfectly efficient it's just automated consistent I can just tell it to run and it'll go um, and you know with with a little bit of programming you could make it just do the staging itself or I could do that eventually it's just that's those those that's not the order of my priorities right now because I'm fine like you know um, basically being a caretaker of it as it runs and running the staging for it and such but yeah we've got it uh, into orbit first run of this script um, where it uh, did where it yeah, ran that specific way and I slightly tweaked these so it doesn't it's not bucking around because it's trying to get both numbers above 200. Uh, just one of them has to be above 200. But really, eventually, I want that to be both a programmable number, so the cutout is determined by the user, and I want that to the targeted altitude, of course, to be one of the values that goes into the functions for determining its flight path, because I want to be able to target a specific orbit. Um, both just one where I'm like, I want this vehicle to go into 300 by 300, or another time 200 by 200. Um, but specifically, I wanted to be able to target uh, and actually tune itself to those altitudes because I wanted to be able to rendezvous. Because uh, that's the ultimate, that's really the only reason I've kind of dabbled in this is because I want a program that can consistently rendezvous with a vehicle that's already in orbit. Because right now, that's kind of the most uh, annoying and stressful thing that I have to do for some of the mission uh, types that I'd like to use. Um, anyway, uh, I'll post this uh, s link to this script along with this. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoy using it. Um, or if you you know if you don't plan to use that script right now, if you're going to wait, or you just like to watch the videos, you know, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, making it, and I'm glad uh, the script is better than it was last video. Uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye.